one minute soak in this glory release your all release your everything everything
let me teach you something about the glory of God it takes time moments of investment in the glory to be able to host very superior dimensions of the power and the grace of God and now I know that we live in a time where when they rush to do everything sometimes the key is to just wait just soak in that glory can I give you one more minute to soak in that glory I'll plead with Pastor Nat to just flow as he blows the trumpet just forget about every and anyone just focus on Jesus focus on Jesus pour your heart and your love like the woman with the alabaster box King of kings, Lord of lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God, we worship you. Ah. The King of kings, Lord of lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God. The King of Kings, Lord of Lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God, we worship you. King of Kings, Lord of Lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God. One final song it says let the weight of your glory fall let it cover all the earth let the weight of your glory fall some prayer let it come Apostles will rise again from Europe, that prophets will rise again from Europe, evangelists will rise again from Europe in the name of Jesus Christ. It says, And it shall come to pass that when the Spirit is poured up upon all flesh, that your sons and daughters will prophesy, your young men will see visions, your old men will dream dreams even upon the maid servants truly there is a revival that is coming across europe 
and spread into the ends of the earth. Let it cover all 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 the earth. It's a prayer. Let it cover. our hearts with fire for you again restore our love and our passion for you we cry visit the United Kingdom again visit Europe again let the revival fire fall let the revival fire fall in the name of Jesus the son of the living God give Jesus a big hand clap and please help me celebrate my friend and brother, Pastor Nathaniel Vashti. Give him a big God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Please be seated. Please be seated. Amazing what God is already doing in our lives. Amazing that there are redefinitions happening, resolutions by the Spirit. Many of you are contacting fire. Access to graces, mantles, the hand of God resting upon you. Ministries are being birthed from this conference. Mandates are being released to men. In the name of Jesus, I declare. Clarity. Some of you are receiving clarity over the work that God has given you. Confusion is coming to an end, even by the Spirit of God. And listen, for many of you, what is happening to you is a spiritual circumcision. A spiritual circumcision. The old is giving way for the new to come. Hallelujah. Yes. You have my everything. You have my everything. Take my everything. I release my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Listen, anoint my everything. Use my everything. I release my everything. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Manchester, hear me. The price for all of God. Is all of you the price for all of God is all of you the price to host all of God superior dimensions of his presence to be trusted with this end time mantle the price is all of you you have my everything just flow with what the Spirit of God is doing this morning. It's a renewal. There is a spiritual circumcision. The sense in then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight that does easily beset us. 
it says and to run with perseverance the race that is set before us looking unto Jesus the Bible calls him the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross there is a man of God here there is a circumcision happening to you there are patterns in ministry you have to drop in this conference and pick up the character of righteousness as you pursue the purposes of the kingdom let every other name fade away let every other name fade away till there's only let every other name fade away Jesus take your place Jesus take your place Let every name Let every other name fade away In my life Sonat came up here, he really stirred up something. I mean, it was it was it was a it was a resonance in the spirit. I sat back there and I was just soaking in that glory. I knew that he struck a chord in the realm of the spirit. Just allow for one more minute. This is why we're here. There is there is a working that the spirit of God is doing in the lives of people. For you cannot put a new wine in an old wine skin. Just one more minute and we'll have our charge for this morning. seated and let's look to the word for a few minutes and whilst that is happening 
I'd like you to still yield yourself to what the Holy Spirit is doing. This is a revival conference. There are many of you who will never forget this day for the rest of your life. In the name of Jesus. Now, I want to recap on three very important things that I shared yesterday. And then I'll just give us the charge for this morning. Whilst we prepare for tonight, tonight is a miracle service. It's also a prophetic service. We're going to be prophesying not just upon your lives, but upon the territory, upon the United Kingdom. And do remember to come with your prayer requests. And um, I'm told, I'm told by the management that we're still allowed to be able to squeeze in about a thousand people for tonight. So we're, we're really grateful to them. Hallelujah. That means that for some of you who sadly had to be turned back yesterday, please you can um, go use the link now that will be sent and very quickly do your registration for tonight. We'll allow you to come in for the final night. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. We began to discuss a few things yesterday as touching revival and um, I told us yesterday that there are three levels to revival genuine authentic biblical revival is threefold number one I said it is personal personal revival that which has to do with God dealing with the individual bringing the individual to a point of repentance brokenness and righteousness then I said the second level of revival is where God deals with his church his body the ecclesia and then the third and final level of revival is where God begins to use the revived individuals the revived body to now transform society and to transform nations hallelujah for many of us when we think revival we just think about the territory and that is wonderful, but that is not how authentic revival happens. Because God's instrument for transformation will always be men. So God always starts with an individual, then he transits to his body, then finally he uses his body to penetrate systems and structures. So I did say that revival is threefold. Hallelujah. Are we still together? And... Um, This morning, I want to give us a charge, a very powerful charge. Now, this message is very important. It is for us here, but then it extends to the body of Christ. This is a very prophetic message, and I want you to please pay attention. Hallelujah. Redefining the church. Redefining the church. Redefining the church. Micah chapter 4, please, from verse 1 and 2. Micah chapter 4 and verse 1 and 2. The Bible says, But in the last days, it shall come to pass, even in Manchester, even in UK and Europe, that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains, and it shall be exalted above the hills, and people shall flow to it. Say amen. amen. Verse 2 says, And many nations, how many? many nations shall come up and say come let us go up to the mountain of the lord and to the house of the god of jacob and he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his paths for the lord shall go forth of zion and the word of the lord from jerusalem this was a prophetic word about the end time church the body of Christ, the influence of the church that will rise and be exalted and the harvest, the global harvest. In fact, let me remind you again that I said the project we call Kingdom Come, please look up, the project we call Kingdom Come or what we know as God's end time agenda. Please do not forget this. I taught you that it is threefold. Number one, the first phase is the global harvest world evangelization i'm saying this so that when you say i am part of god's end time army it's important to know your job description 
there are only three things that the end time agenda of God captures number one is world evangelization the global harvest number two the perfecting the maturing of the saints that means bringing believers to a higher realm of stature and maturity in the spirit because the Bible declares that an heir for as long as he's a child that he differs not from a slave are we together and then the third level the third level is territorial transformation so when we talk about the end time agenda of God or the project kingdom come number one world evangelization to see that the nations come under the governing influence of the Christ number two the maturity of the saints and then number three the transformation of nations territories that also includes systems and structures are we together in Matthew chapter 16 Matthew chapter 16 I begin my reading from verse 13 this was a conversation between Jesus and his disciples Jesus came to the coast of Caesarea Philippi and he asked his disciples saying who do men say that I the son of man am so Jesus is probing into their understanding of who they thought he was and verse 14 says some say that thou art the Baptist John now some say Elias some others Jeremiah or one of the prophets he said unto them but whom say ye that I am and there was silence can you imagine that until this time they had walked with Jesus they had seen the miracles they had seen mighty manifestations of his power they watched the sick get healed they watched burdens taken away from people in a moment and yet they did not know who Jesus was now Jesus was asking them who do men say that I am and they said well they say you are John they say you are one of the prophets he said okay now you've walked with me what is your verdict who do you say that I am and there was silence but then Peter speaks and he says I know who thou art thou art the Christ the son of the living God next verse and Jesus answered and said unto him blessed art thou Simon but Jonah for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee but my father which is in heaven now he says and I say unto thee thou art Peter and upon this rock I will build my church the first mention of the word church as we find in scripture came from the lips of Jesus himself he said I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it shout a loud amen The concept of church sadly has been greatly misunderstood across the nations of the earth in fact in many regions at the very mention of the word church it comes with a lot of um, sad reactions a lot of irritations because so many people have outsourced several unscriptural ideas about the church for various reasons the first question that I seek to answer in my discourse this morning is why there is such a growing disdain and a hatred for the church. I want you to listen very carefully. I have observed respectfully that from nation to nation you find that people seem to have a growing disdain, a growing hatred for the church. The idea of church is frowned at by so many people they they do not you you literally can interrupt their mood by introducing the idea of church why is that so probably there are many of us here in this great auditorium and then following online who do not detest completely the idea of church I want you to give the Holy Spirit a chance to give you a renewed orientation we are redefining the concept of church 
I listed three reasons here why I believe that there seemed to be such a growing disdain for the church. Number one, the first reason here is because of what I have written as character inconsistencies, especially among the priesthood, among the vessels that communicates the counsel of God. I think the first reason why there seems to be a growing, even a global disdain for the idea of church is because of the many disappointments that people, that includes members, that includes, you know, citizens across territories have had over vessels. It looks like the vessels have not been able to communicate the best and the most of character. So because of character inconsistencies, many people have concluded that the church is not worth their time, their commitment, character inconsistencies. Let me tell you up front that the Bible is not ashamed and afraid to let us know that the vessels that God uses are not perfect themselves. Now that is not to endorse licentiousness, not at all. But I need to tell you offhand that the godlike expectations we have over priesthood will only leave us perpetually in disappointment. Because in truth, the best and the most of us still remains human. Are we together? When Jesus walked upon the earth, the Bible does not hide his humanity. He was hungry. He wept. He was angry. He flogged people at the temple. Yet the Bible calls him the Lamb of God. Character inconsistencies. While it is true that as men and women of God, we must continue to trust God to rise to levels where our lives become models enough, enough to inspire a generation to love God. I must on behalf of priesthood plead that we have a high sense of tolerance as we watch men and women communicate the counsel of God because the best of us is still human. This is a very uncomfortable admittance, but I tell you, contained in this admission is, is, is liberation, liberty, deliverance. There is a godlike expectation upon the priesthood that is putting so much pressure on people. So we feel guilty when we are hungry. We feel guilty when we are angry. We feel guilty when we are sad. Men and women of God will have family issues. Men and women of God may have all kinds of issues, health issues. That is the reason why the object, watch this now, the object of our projection must be Jesus himself and not men. Are we together now? Yes. Men are ushers, ushers leading us to the Christ. The Bible says, looking up to Jesus, unto Jesus. So the first reason why I believe there is a growing, a growing disdain for the church is character inconsistencies. Number two, number two is very instructive. Please write. The absence of intelligent, life-applicable teachings that offer real life solutions to human problems. The second reason, I'll be patient so you can write. The absence of intelligent, life applicable teachings that offer real solutions to human problems. I believe and I am convinced that this is the second reason why there is a growing disdain for the church. The absence, one more time for emphasis, the absence of intelligent, life applicable teachings that offer real problems, offer real solutions to human problems. Please look up. And this is a charge to ministers of the gospel, respectfully speaking. For as long as our sermons, for as long as our teachings are laced with all kinds of prejudices and biases and do not bring real scriptural solutions to the problems of people, our pews will remain empty. This is true. Never downplay the desperation of humans to see solutions 
provided for their problems they will go to any length and if the church stops being a true solution center by giving people an a scripture based orientation that translates to solutions our pulpits our pews will remain empty someone shout God forbid so the second reason why the church does not seem to make that much impact in society is because of the absence of intelligent life applicable teachings I confess to you that I will not come and sit down under a spiritual leader who will not enlighten my mind and grant me scripture based teachings with intelligence communicated articulately to help you make quality decisions are we together and now you see in our world today as we know there are many alternatives many alternatives that seem to propose solutions so if the church must remain relevant especially in the times that we live in we must restore doctrine we must restore intelligent life applicable teachings that when I invest one, two, three, four hours in a church, I should go out feeling happy, not regretting that I wasted my time. I should live wiser than I came. Is that true? I should live with a greater understanding about the mysteries of the kingdom, the laws of life. The intelligence gotten from church should translate to excellence in the workplace excellence in society there should be a distinctive difference between a believer who has been methodically mentored in church and one who has not been around the church but sadly the case is not so in many regions so you cannot tell by spiritual intelligence who has been faithful in church and who has left church because it looks like they all behave the same way the Bible says and that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scripture which is able to make you wise unto salvation the wisdom component the intelligence component must be restored to our pulpit when they looked at Peter these were uneducated unlearned men but when they looked at the level of intelligence Peter was communicating the gospel with such precision the Bible says they learned that he had been with Jesus when you follow him he makes you he is a maker not just a savior he makes men he turns you from a weak you to a strong you from an unenlightened you to an intelligent you did the Bible not say in Job chapter 32 and verse 8 Eli who speaking said but there is a spirit in man it says and the breath or the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding are we together in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 Paul was mentoring the church in Ephesus and here's what he had to say he said having the understanding darkened being alienated from the life of God he says through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart and this is the assignment of the prince of this world he has a singular assignment of blinding the minds of people so that they do not have the requisite level of spiritual orientation that translates to a victorious Christian life in Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15 it says and I will give you pastors or shepherds according to my heart it says and they will feed you with knowledge and with understanding I charge every co-laborer in the gospel in Manchester here, the United Kingdom, Europe and across the globe. We must obtain grace in the name of Jesus Christ to make every church experience become a life transforming experience. People are tired of religion and dead rituals that do not sustain power. People desire to be taught by the word, to be built by the word. Are we together now? Yes. Number three, the third reason very quickly why I believe that there is such a growing disdain 
for the church is the absence of genuine spiritual power that backs and defends our propositions the absence of genuine spiritual power that backs and defends our propositions there are many things we say and we claim God can do but the requisite spiritual power to prove it here and now seems to be absent the absence of genuine spiritual power that backs and defends our proposition so for instance we say Jesus heals and we shout amen but when there are sick people still moving around not healed eventually they will leave church we say Jesus is able to prosper and several people come from all kinds of backgrounds and now they come to Jesus and they cannot be lifted beyond the, the quality of the current quality of their lives we must introduce a gospel that works if Jesus heals we must be able to prove it if Jesus lifts we must be able to prove it hallelujah if Jesus restores we must be able to prove it if Jesus can grant speed to men we must be able to prove it the world that we live in now does not fall to blind sentiments the world that we live in now requires an evidence and the Bible says in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 it says ye shall receive power say power please shout it say power ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and by that empowerment you will be witnesses witnesses more than preachers you will be witnesses unto me a witness is a validator of a claim the singular assignment of a witness is to make true whatever claim you have made and no witness is a true witness until you have a token of truthfulness called evidence when you go to the court of law are we together now yes you can't just say I am a witness the judge will ask you present your evidence so when you say Jesus lifts the world will say where is the evidence someone will become a genuine witness with your evidences all around you all around you when Peter healed the man at gate beautiful they were summoned by the Jerusalem council and the Bible says that Peter did not go alone he carried his evidence the man who had been healed with him and when Peter made his propositions defending the healing of that man the Bible says they looked among themselves and they said look this is a notable miracle there's nothing we can say against it we must trust God for grace to be able to demonstrate everything that we claim Jesus is everything that we claim he can do so when you see someone who has been oppressed by all kinds of demonic forces and you tell them Jesus is able to set you free and they say I believe I hope that you will have the power to prove in reality let me show you a scripture Acts chapter 8 and verse 5 look at this scripture very closely Acts chapter 8 and verse 5 the Acts of the Apostles then Pete then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them is that in your Bible verse 6 and the people with one accord in fact let's read together verse 6 ready one to read and the people with one accord gave heed to those things which Philip spake uh-huh hearing and seeing take note hearing and seeing if it is the gospel men should hear then they should see hearing and seeing that Jesus heals hearing and seeing that Jesus lifts hearing and seeing that Jesus restores for many people they've only heard it's time for the world to see for many people they've only heard that it is true he restores they've only heard that it is true he's able to save unto the uttermost 
but it's time to see you can doubt what you hear but you will hardly doubt what you see is that true Jesus will be lifted again in the name of Jesus even over Europe I prophesy that Jesus will be lifted again my beloved is the most beautiful among thousands and thousands my beloved the most beautiful among thousands and thousands Yeshua and then we'll pray what is the church Jesus himself spoke about the church what exactly is the church number one are you ready the church is a spiritual strategy huh. beyond the people and beyond the buildings the church is a spiritual strategy the church is an invention of God's own intelligence. In fact, the only strategy that is able to capture and represent the purposes of God upon the earth is called the church. The church is a strategy. It was an idea that came from God himself. In Jeremiah chapter 51 from verse 20, Jeremiah 51 from verse 20, it says, thou art my battle axe. It didn't say you have my battle axe. You are that axe yourself. Hallelujah. Thou art my battle axe. Manchester, hear me. United Kingdom, hear me. Europe, hear me. Believers within this region, you are God's battle axe. It says, my weapons of war. Now watch this. For with thee, I will break in pieces the nations. With thee I will destroy kingdoms. Reading to 23. And with thee I will break in pieces the horses and his rider. With thee I will break in pieces the chariots and his rider. With thee also I will break in pieces man and woman. With thee I will break in pieces young and old. And with thee I will break in pieces the young man and the maid. I will also break in pieces with thee the shepherd and his flock and with thee I will break in pieces the husbandman and his yoke of oxen and with thee I will break in pieces captains and rulers 
the church is a spiritual strategy that every time Satan shows up to fight the purposes of God the solution to that issue is the church the church the church is a strategy more than a building more than a convergence of people loyal to a faith or a denomination the church is a strategy when covid covid broke out from 2019 into 2020 the world leaders had to come together to come up with strategies is that true and from nation to nation there were all kinds of inventions and ideas to manage that from the the nose mask to um, uh, what they call it now distance you know giving a few meters away and all kinds of things they shut down other operations in fact there was a global shutdown these were all strategies to manage the situation so every time there's darkness every time there's a prevalence of decadence the Lord sends his strategy that strategy is called the church number two very quickly what is the church the church refers to men and women men and women men and women the church refers to people who have chosen to submit to the governing influence of the Christ the church refers to men and women who have chosen to submit to the governing influence of the Christ you can have a convergence of people but if they do not submit to the governing influence of the church of the Christ you have a crowd not the church for a people to be called the church Christ has to be the head are we together now he must be the epicenter of those people two scriptures very quickly first Peter chapter 2 and verse 5 1st Peter chapter 2 and verse 5 let's read together ready one to read ye also as lively stones the Bible says are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ so he calls men lively stones these are the stones that he uses to build up that spiritual house so when Jesus says I will build up my church he was not talking about bricks and mortar he was talking about men and women who will make themselves malleable enough by submitting to the governing influence of the Christ please hear me our focus was go beyond having the convergence of a crowd to having men and women who will fully submit themselves to the governing influence of the of the Christ a crowd is not the church what makes the church the church is that Christ must be the center not activities not religiosity respectfully speaking If Jesus Christ is not found there it is not the church it can be a healthy convergence of people but if it must be the church then it must be men and women who have submitted to the governing authority of the Christ hallelujah are we together number three what is the church I wrote here that the church finally is an institution the church is an institution so the church is a strategy the church refers to men and women who have willfully submitted to the governing influence of the Christ but from a territorial standpoint the church is also an institution first Timothy chapter 3 and verse 15 The Bible says, but if I tarry long, that thou mayest know that how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, 
which is the church is that in your bible the house of god is the church of the living god and he calls it the pillar and the ground of the truth that means the church should be the institution that holds that has the purest capture of truth the church is an institution when you want to study about history and all of that you go to a library or you go to the museum you don't go to the hospital is that true the church should have an exact product that you should that it sells truth sanctify them by thy truth thy word is truth the bible calls it the pillar and the ground as an institution that means when you are confused about life when you've been lied to say by social media when you've been lied to by mainstream media and you want verifications for your life and your destiny the bible says the institution to resort to for clarity is the church when you have any confusion as to your spiritual conviction when you have any confusion as to your personal identity you resort to the church for clarity the church is an institution hallelujah hebrews chapter 10 please give us 24 and 25 hebrews chapter 10 24 and 25 it says and let us consider one another to provoke on to love and to good works 25 it says not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of such is assembling of ourselves that means there is a place where we converge together as the manner of some is it says but exhorting one another where in that place of convergence and so much so as ye see the day approaching so it is not unscriptural to have buildings to have places of convergence i give you a teaser to my teaching tonight I'm going to be teaching you not just how to ignite, but how to preserve territorial revivals. Hallelujah. So that the program of God, awakenings will not be lost. We are going to be looking through history to find out why certain revivals were lost. Mighty moves of God. The Azusa Street Revival, the Wells um, Revival, and all kinds of moves of God across the nations. But then it gets to a point where it just fades away. There is a spiritual strategy that can preserve the move of God from one generation to the other. Hallelujah. So the church is number one, a strategy. God's strategy because it is called his church. This is very important. As a pastor, as a priest, you are only a steward over God's people. It's important that we understand that the church belongs to Jesus. He does not just head the church. He owns the church. Are we together? And then the church refers to men and women together who have chosen as an act of their will to submit to the governing influence of the Christ. Then the church refers to that institution. Now, let me tell you this. When the devil wants to destroy society, all he needs to do is to take away the impact of the church. He does not need to just go to the hospitals, government. No, no, no. All he needs to do is to take away the impact of the church. In Matthew chapter 5 and verse 13, Jesus speaking about the believers he said ye are the salt of the earth the salt has two assignments essentially number one for taste to add taste and value number two for preservation so when he says you are the salt of the earth are we together now you should preserve you should add value then he says you are the light of the world the assignment of light is to give illumination. Illumination. Do you know that you can have a healthy eye, but without light you cannot see? It is the union of a healthy eye and light that produces vision. The church 
is the light of the world. That means without us, we have a right to probe what people are seeing because there is no, there is no correctness. You need to use the lens of the church to see properly. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. It says, neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel, but that they keep it on a candlestick or a lampstand, and it gives illumination to everyone who is there. Verse 16 now says, so let your light so shine before men that they may see your good deeds and then to glorify your Father which is in heaven. Hallelujah. Listen to me. For many of you who have had a wrong and a false narrative about church, I need you to know that you will always find God in the midst of his people. Are we together? Now, every leader, every leader has a place of residence. Is that true? If you come to my office, there is no guarantee that you will find me all the time because we have official hours. Are we, to, are we together? You cannot come to a man's office at odd hours and have the guarantee to meet him, but you will most likely find that man once it is off, off, off office hours, you find that man in his home. Let me tell you the truth. God on earth does not reside in a river. God on earth does not reside somewhere in the air. The Holy Ghost is not just roaming around. There is an exact place of residence where God can be found. It is called the church. So every time you are looking for God, you are in a wrong location unless and until you come to the church. Are we together? Yes. The church is where God dwells. He has chosen to make the church his place of habitation. When Solomon was dedicating the temple in Jerusalem, here's what he said. He said, now arise, O God. And he said, come to your resting place. Not your place of visitation, your resting place. Even you and the ark of your might. Now arise, O God. Come to your resting place. The church is his resting place. You will always find God in church. I can't guarantee that you will find a preacher always. I can't guarantee that you will find ushers always, but I give you a guarantee. If it is the house of God, you will find Jesus there. For the Bible says, Jesus himself speaking, that where two or three are gathered in my name, where two or three are gathered in my name, he said, there I am in the midst of them. In the midst of them. In the midst of them. No wonder, the moment there were two and three, he came as the fourth man in the fire. Because it does not matter the location. Provided you are two or three, God, that even in the midst of your challenges, this is a revelation for someone already. Every time you are doubting whether you personally are hosting the presence of God, look for another believer, then another one. And the moment you are two or three, that is a, a confirmation. Even if you are in the midst of trouble, the fourth man will always come there. Where two or three are gathered, it didn't say in a nice location. Where two or three are gathered. So, if I'm going through pains, if I'm in a situation that is uncomfortable, and I'm not sure he will show up, I've done all that I need to do, I can take advantage of that truth and say, where is another believer? Where are you? It doesn't matter what nation. It doesn't matter what region. Provided you have chosen to submit to the authority of Christ, come together and let's form the church. Two or three in his name. This is why we are so confident that he's in this place. We may have people from Ghana, from South Africa, from Nigeria, from UK, from America. But you see, the beautiful thing is that when we come, in as much as we are holding our various flags, but you see, we're under the authority of one name, in fact, the Bible puts it this way, one Lord, one faith, 
one baptism that I can hug a Ghanaian and say my brother and I'm correct I can hug a South African and say my sister and I'm right isn't that amazing I can hug someone that I do not have any physical relationship with and we begin to talk immediately and we are family I think you should hug someone by your left and right and say it's good to see you I pray for you you pray for me I love I need you to survive I will about the church let me show you the other side to the church that you may not have been told the church is not just a place of hatred like sometimes media proposes they make it look like it's a fierce place no I present to you the authentic church Acts chapter 2 and verse 42 I'm selling an idea about the church redefining the church so that on Sunday, you will run with your children back to church after five years. Back to church after 10 years. Come on, Manchester. Back to church after 20 years. Please sit down. Acts chapter 2. That in Manchester on Sundays or every other worship days, the streets will suddenly be empty. And a few people will have to ask, what is going on? And you simply tell them a revival. A revival in Manchester. Where has everybody gone to? The movie theater? No, the church. The house of God. Acts chapter 2 and verse 42. Reading to 47, please pay attention. And they continued steadfastly, showing you what happens in church. Number one, the church is a place of doctrine. Doctrine. They continued steadfastly as a church in the apostles' doctrine. Number two, the church is the place of fellowship. Is the word koinonia. The sharing together. Participation. If I were in my house, would I hear the beautiful sounds that came from Pastor Nat? How many of you were so blessed while he worshipped? That's what you get in church. You don't get that in a bank. No. You don't get that in a hospital. As wonderful as they all are, there is a sound that only comes from church. Number three. And in breaking of bread, communion, you find this in church. Breaking of bread, not just the scripture. The breaking of bread in the Bible talks of a sound exegesis of scripture. But it also talks of communion. And then the Bible says prayers. That you find prayers in the church. So you can take your burdens and come. You can, your disappointments, you're struggling with your papers, you're, you're struggling with your family, struggling with your child. Yes. For in the sanctuary, I Hear me? No matter what else is in church, verify that Jesus is there. You have good sound without Jesus. That is not church. You have intelligent people without Jesus. That is not church. It is his coming that makes it church. I advocate excellence at the highest level. But let me challenge you. No amount of excellence will replace his presence. No amount of intellectual acumen will replace.
face his presence you find him in church next verse let's finish up verse 43 now please look at your screens carefully the Bible says and fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles this is something else you find in church signs and wonders signs and wonders the manifestations of the Spirit and all that believed were together all that believed were together all that believed were together I taught you yesterday that community kingdom community living is the key to sustaining kingdom values in isolation your convictions may dwindle but when you are together with brethren you can pray in tongues together and not feel embarrassed are we together you can discuss God together and not feel out of place reading to 47 45 now they sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need you know what this means that the church is a place of love look up please some of you may have been hurt by church maybe your pastor maybe some member some of you may have been betrayed some of you may have been paid from church let me tell you on behalf of Jesus and on behalf of the servants of God in Europe we apologize to you but I will tell you again the church is still a place of love the church is still a place of love you find love in church like no other that someone can be led of the spirit and he looks at you and says you you look to me like a single mom having needs and you say that is true how did you know the Holy Ghost told me and now God has placed it upon my heart to support your children in school you find that in church if God is in church and God is love what is in church Manchester please listen to me UK listen to me you find love in church you've trusted people and things of lesser value with your heart and your life why not give God a chance give church a chance again give church a chance again Apostle you don't know my experience with church you don't know my experience with my pastor my priest you don't know my experience with my music director on behalf of Jesus I apologize for your pain but I still reintroduce church again it is the most superior alternative come to church come to Jesus meet church meet Jesus are we together and they continuing daily with one accord in the temple in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and with singleness of heart I love the last verse praising God this happens in church this happens in church praising God and having favor where else do you get favor That grace for favor is truly found in the house of God. That you can contact a grace for favor in church. You know what it means to be favored? To be favored means to be shown unusual kindness. To be favored means to have unusual access. To be favored means to command unusual acceptance. That the grace that makes for these possibilities is found in church. Let's finish up having favor with all the people and the Lord added daily to the church as many as should be saved so we've had all kinds of ideas about church sadly and respectfully speaking society now views church as a nuisance to civilization so when people want to discuss matters of civilization and transformation they take the idea of church out no you remove the church out of anything you have destroyed the life-giving factor there are we together and I stand this morning on behalf of Jesus Christ 
and on behalf of every servant of the Lord Jesus Christ who loves the Lord in Manchester and in UK to make a clarion call UK return to church Manchester return to church is a call from a heart of love it's a passionate call from a man who loves Jesus and loves you return to church means return to the place of restoration return to church means return to a place of love return to church means return to a place of doctrine return to church means return to a place where you can find God in truth Apostle but will I be accepted I've left church for many decades you are most welcome Apostle, when I left church, I went into all kinds of things. Moral decadence, my life right now is nothing to write home about. Will the church accept me? Anything Jesus can accept, the church can accept. If he accepts people with all kinds of wounded lives and destinies, then you are most welcome. However, I give you a disclaimer. You come as you are, but there is power there to not leave you as you are so ensure that as you come you are prepared to meet the transforming power of Jesus Christ he says come follow me and I will make you he's a maker look what he did to the woman at the well look what he did to Nicodemus look what he did to the disciples look what he did to Matthew Levi Look what he did to Zacchaeus. You know you have met him when your life changes completely. When you come to church, do not come just to spectate and hope that you find something interesting. You must come with your heart open. Because the Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. And it says, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Then it says, we all with faces unveiled, beholding him as in a mirror. It says, we are changed. Changed from the former you to the better you. Changed from the weak you to the strong you. Changed from the sinful you to the righteous you. Changed from the defeated you to the victorious you. You believe that shout amen. amen my last call and we begin to pray is that the church is a place where you should not go alone as for me and my house someone say prophetically as for me and my house one more time as for me and my house say as for me and my business as for me and my company as for me and my house it says we not I when it is church the language is we now I am saved but my son is not saved I lovingly intercede for him and hope that one day I'm and make efforts in partnership with the Holy Spirit to take him to church because hear me it is as for me and my house. Do you know what it means to stand at the shores of heaven and watch your child run to you? Watch your staff in office run to you. Now listen, I'm not talking about advocating fanatism that tries to downplay on people's rights. This is not what I'm teaching. I'm talking about a ministry that, that stems from a heart of love intended to help people find a superior experience even Jesus that someone will grab you from the back in heaven and you turn and say who are you and you say well you may not know but pastor thank you you made an altar call one day and I was there look what my life has become now I'm in heaven listen I want you to listen very carefully the Bible tells us a very interesting parable between two people and is simply called one a rich man. No name. A rich man. So he deserves our respect first and foremost for being rich. Are we together? Respect every rich man who becomes rich by integrity. It takes 
wealth that is gotten by integrity is a display of obedience to laws a display of understanding and managing relationships and providing value that is needed and useful within the context of a civilization so do not downplay rich people the Bible talks about a rich man then the Bible talks about another gentleman called Lazarus are we together so scene one the rich man is there enjoying his affluence and Lazarus was somewhere there Lazarus did not have he didn't do much sadly for whatever reason he did not make the most of his life that is not the will of God also are we together but the one thing he got right based on that parable was to make his ways right with Jesus and then the Bible says sin two both of them died and then Lazarus was at Abraham's bosom and the rich man was in hell and that the rich man went through the torture of fire and he began to call upon Lazarus that he should dip his finger can you imagine and just have him taste a drop of water and that opportunity was not there anymore and he made a plea his plea was since you cannot help me please send Lazarus back to the earth so that you would talk to my family members that this place is a place of torture and that none of them no matter what that they they have or what they got in the earth that they should ensure that they find Jesus also and he said no we will not allow someone come back they have the prophets and they have the law in other words let them go to church there are people already mandated to introduce Jesus and to help them have a definite encounter with Jesus hear me for many of us here this morning scattered across this auditorium and for the many following online I don't intend to bring you sad memories but I presume that you may have lost someone close to you who perhaps rejected Jesus in their life and based on the authority of scripture we understand that when people die without Jesus that is the beginning of eternal damnation we may not be able to do anything about those who have gone without him but the call right now is for those who are alive those who are alive that the master calls you calls you not just to return to church but calls you to return to Jesus to Jesus the author and the finisher the Bible declares of our faith listen we celebrated so many miracles yesterday and all through the sessions that we have together we'll celebrate the hand of God in mighty ways but I want you to listen very carefully the greatest call the greatest call when you are given an employment letter I, I, I watched people celebrate miracle jobs here and they were so happy about it that is a great call but there is a call that is greater and nobler than that when you are given an award territorially nationally you receive it with such pride and prestige but there is a greater gift than all of that when we accomplish and achieve things in our lives we do that with pride our offices are well decorated with all our awards testaments of our achievements but there is a greater a greater gift than that permit me ladies and gentlemen to introduce to you one more time the head of the church his name is Jesus a few things about Jesus that may interest you number one he is the son of God the only begotten of the father the Bible declares and then the Bible tells us that he was sent to the earth listen carefully the word incarnate sent to the earth as a revelation of the father's love what was his assignment to come and become a mediator that men who through sin have been alienated from the life of God Jesus was sent as a reconciler as a mediator 
the purpose of a mediator is to bring two aggrieved parties back to a point of peace and let me tell you the truth ladies and gentlemen it took his life and his blood to make that mediation possible you laid aside your majesty gave up everything for me suffered at the hands of those you have created you took all my guilt and shame when you died and rose again now today you reign in heaven and now exalted i really want to worship you my lord you have won my heart and i am yours forever and ever i will love you you are the only one who died for me gave your life to set me free so i lift my voice to you in adoration watch this the only person who did a bit of what jesus was about to do or what the father was about to do was the man abraham when he was asked to take his only son abraham dragged isaac and he did that i can imagine that he was crying when he dragged his only son had waited 25 years for the arrival of that young boy and i could imagine abraham crying father what did i do and abraham would reply him saying i was in love with one before your arrival and not even your arrival would interrupt my love for him watch this when jesus was on his way to golgotha do you know what the bible has to say about jesus that he was beaten Those he fed, where were the 5,000 people when Jesus was on his way to the cross? Where was Lazarus? They ran away and they left him. And he carried that cross by himself. He cried, but he continued. Like we've heard again and again, it was not the nails that held him. It was his love. For he had the power to summon 10,000 angels. Yet love kept him there. And while he was upon that cross, he looked across Manchester. He looked across Europe. And through time, he saw Joshua Selman. He saw Nathaniel Bassi. He saw this apostolic conference. And it was worth his death. He said, for you I will die a thousand times. Hallelujah. Watch this. Ladies and gentlemen, when he hung upon that cross, he said, Eloi, Eloi, Lamak Sabachthani, Father, why have you forsaken me? The father had to turn his face away from Jesus. But then he died. Listen. It's one of the most painful expressions in scripture. Life died. Love died. Truth died. Well, the cross will always represent the love God had for me. When the Lord of glory heaven sent, gave all on Calvary just for me just for me Jesus came and did it just for me but you see when truth was buried when life was buried when light was buried when love was buried you know where he went the Bible says he descended to Hades, the place of the dead. And Paul gave us that epic picture that the cohorts of darkness were upon him, forcing him to bow to the lordship of Satan. And when the legal claims of justice were made, the Bible says he made a public show of them, triumphing over them in judgment. 
Watch this. And said, and Jesus went to Satan himself and said, Give me the keys. The keys you collected from Adam. Hallelujah. And he collected the keys that will restore our dominion and our relationship. And the Bible says, according to Peter's epistle, that he preached to the saints that had been departed and they believed the gospel and he found a people victorious. The hymn writer says, up from the grave he arose with the mighty triumph all his foes. It says he arose the victor from the dark domain and he lives forever with his saints to reign. On the third day, in the silence that was upon the earth, it looked like life had died. Our lives and our destinies were doomed. Suddenly there was a noise. Ah, suddenly. A sound. You hear me? It was not the sound of a tsunami. It was not the sound of a volcano. It was the sound of ancient gates that were being opened. He said, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted. Ancient door, that the King of glory, watch this, there was about to be a triumphant entry. How do you bury life? How do you kill truth? And the Bible says an angel came and he rolled away the stone and sat on it. And the victorious one, my victorious one, the captain, the champion, victorious, the head of the church. Hallelujah. The Bible says when he came out, he was not in a rush to come out of the grave. He folded his clothes with intelligence. And when he met the disciples, he said, all hail, all authority. Ah, all authority. Manchester, all authority. America, all authority. UK, all authority. In heaven and the earth has been given unto me. He says, Go ye therefore, go ye therefore, go ye therefore. Church, you are not weak, you are empowered. The head of the church is the all powerful God. Hallelujah. You see, but Jesus, in teaching about the church, he said, I will build my church. Then he leaves us with a disclaimer that the gates of hell will always be around the corridor. But he said, the gates of hell manifesting as sickness. The gates of hell manifesting as poverty. The gates of hell manifesting as yokes and curses. Ah. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. Where the victors come, you overcome. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victors crown. You overcome. Let's go. From this afternoon up until the evening, let that be your song. That when we are done with this morning session, that should be your song. Let every devil know that the victorious one is the head of the church. The church is not an empty collection of people. We may look weak, but there is a mighty and terrible one that stands behind us. We may look weak. But there is an omnipotent one, omniscient. 
Watch this, we are wrapping up. This is what gives us the audacity to stand from one position and speak over the nation. Because the head of the church defends our speakings with his power. This is why Pastor Nathaniel can stand from one position and blow the shofar across the nations. That is why we can pray from one location and miracles begin to happen everywhere. Same power that conquered the grave lives in me. Hey, lives in me. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me. Lives in me. Come on, Manchester. We're going to sing this song one more time. Then I'll make an altar call and I'll pray for you. As you sing this song, see sickness bowing. As you sing this song, see your mortgage issue bowing. As you sing this song, see your children that have been lost coming back to Jesus. As a pastor, see your members being restored. That same power that raised Christ from the dead is the same power that heals the sick. Is the same power that saves sinners. Are you ready, Manchester? Wave your flags as we celebrate. Same power that conquered the grave from every nation, every tribe, and every tongue. church gives you an opportunity right now we saw a massive harvest of people yesterday perhaps you were not here yesterday or you were not convinced enough Jesus gives you a renewed opportunity to make it right now that the church has been redefined for you I want you to watch the power that resides within the church he's given us power that in his name we are able to bring many even to salvation. I want to make a call right now. No matter how lost, no matter how far, no matter how bad things have been, the lover of your soul is giving you an opportunity to make it right. I know we made a call yesterday, but Jesus is still calling. It may just be one person, it may just be two people, but the lover of your soul is calling that you give him a chance to remake your life a chance to rebuild your life are we together I'm going to count one to five like I did yesterday I want someone who is not ashamed of Jesus someone who is saying apostle finally I'm ready to make it right with Jesus leave your seat right now and come stand before Jesus as I lead you to the cross now watch this, my friend and brother Pasanak is going to blow the shofar and whilst that happens wherever you are, I want you to rush, make your way to the front and by the way, for those who are following online, those who are following online be prepared to make this prayer and when we're done, 
I'm going to speak over your life and then give you some instructions for evening. I sense in my spirit, we're not going to have all the time to minister because I want you to rest for tonight. But after this, there will be a shout of praise. Tehila, you heard the testimonies. I want to declare prophetically when we're done. Miracles that you've been bearing, you've been trusting God for all kinds of things. Be prepared to wave everything that is antichrist goodbye once and for all. Are we together now? Come. Come. Yes, sir. Come to Jesus. The clarion call. The master call. The master call. Come. The king is calling you. Hallelujah. I'm about to lead you to make that prayer. But a song just came to my heart, Pastor Nat. I know a God who is merciful and kind. Faithful and gracious. You know that song? And the apple, apple of his eyes. The thought that fills his heart every morning, noon, and night. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He loved me when I didn't care. What was patient till I came? Running back into his arms. Look how he's turned my life around. Made me a shining star. To reveal this is the part I, I love worship. I will worship you forever, love you forever because this God is too good. Oh, I will worship you forever, love you forever because this God is too good. Hallelujah. Now, you're going to be given a card. I'd like you to please do well to fill that card legibly. And then I'll pray a prayer for you now. I'll lead you to make your confession of faith. And for those who are online, the cards are available. You can scan and then fill and send back. Just pause for a moment. Lift your right hand. And then I lead you to pray this prayer. Thank you. Thank you so much for making this decision. Out of you will come apostles. Out of you will come prophets. Out of you will come evangelists. Out of you will come kingdom financiers. It's a new beginning for you. Pray this prayer after me. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus. One more time. Say, Lord Jesus. I love you with all my heart. I declare that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that the power of sin Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight, I'm a child of God. I go forward ever and backward never. Amen and amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you. The Bible declares that as many who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. I decree and declare by the authority of scripture and based on your confession, I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God in the name of Jesus. The power of sin, the power of Satan is broken over your life. From tonight, you walk and live the victorious life 
in Jesus mighty name now please do well to you can you can have the pen just fill the details or you can return to your seat but make sure by all means please do well to communicate the completed card to any of the ushers available and around you and um, you have from now up until the end of the service we just have a few more minutes we're going to have some time to just blow the shofar and I speak over your life some instructions and we'll be ready for tonight is someone excited hallelujah God bless you how many of you I hope you all have the cards do you have your card if you don't please wave your hands and then um, yes we have we have the Bibles this thankfully we're so grateful again to the Bible Society UK thank you for the seed of these Bibles and we're truly honored and it's our joy to present these Bibles to as many um, I don't know if we will go around but for as many who um, can receive it please take it as our token of love is our contribution towards your spiritual growth may the Lord bless you in Jesus name hallelujah praise the name of the Lord you can return back to your seat rejoicing God bless you now hallelujah we're out of this place in the next 10 minutes but it's going to be no problem we're going to pray for her darling just be patient we have a miracle service huh thank you for your faith God bless you let's honor her thank you hallelujah now watch this the next 10 minutes will be a life-defining prophetic moment are we together I sense in my heart that there are three miracles that God wants to produce we may not have the time to take the testimonies we'll leave that until evening number one there is a grace for restoration you know what it means to restore to restore means to take the opportunities lost and bring them back to your future number two if you are here trusting God for the fruit of the womb how many people are trusting God for the fruit of the womb now only those people please let's clear the way only those people as we sound I, I sensed while I sat here and my dear brother and friend personal just told me that he sensed this also those trusting God for you you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb I want you to come and stand here please for yourself I know there might be a crowd of people for yourself begin to celebrate in advance my God all this for the fruit of the womb Manchester are you ready for all these babies UK are you ready for all these babies goodness now hold on please once the space is exhausted my apologies you may need to stand where you are so that um, there's no disorderliness once the space is exhausted please ushers help us protocol help us please cooperate with them once the front I just felt led to do this else I would not do it so restoration number one number two is the miracle of fruitfulness but then number three listen the book of remembrance is about to be opened for someone let me give you a scriptural basis for this and then we we'll open fire in this place remember the Bible talks about a man in the book of Esther called Mordecai that this man had saved the king but he was not rewarded and then the Bible says that night could not Ahasuerus sleep and he said bring me the Chronicles and when they opened it he found where Mordecai had helped him there are many of you here who have been part of the success stories of many but you have been forgotten as we celebrate in the next two three minutes listen I want you to know and believe that a book of remembrance will be opened concerning you I don't know how God is going to lead the man of God to take us but for the next two three minutes 
just walk with whatever instruction he gives you after that i'll be ready to prophesy he said bring me a mistral and when he brought the mistral he began to play he said and the hand of the lord came upon me and he began to prophesy that you may not see wind so i'm going to give pastor now the next five minutes he's going to lead us in that tehila a sound that announces resurrection yes sir to the prophetic there is the revelatory dimension of the prophetic strengthens your faith comforts you and gives you direction but the most superior dimension of the prophetic is the creative dimension of the prophetic there is nothing you cannot I truly believe that there's no mountain you cannot do yeah. if you have said then you will do it you have a track record of keeping your word and you're
Genesis 21 from verse 1 and 2. I want all of you who are in front to read this scripture. Genesis 21, media help us. 1 and 2. Genesis chapter 21 from verse 1 and then verse 2. Do we have it projected? Genesis chapter 21. Let's read together. We'll read 1 and 2. Are you ready? 1 and 2. Where, the, where Sarah is, put your name. Are you ready? 1, 2, read. To read. Verse 2. Hallelujah. Now, for the women, just lay your hand on your chest or your stomach, just any point of contact. There's such a mighty atmosphere in this place. This is one of the things that God is doing. I'm about to pray. Behind most issues of barrenness are demon spirits. You watch what happens in the church now. He's given us the authority and the mantle and the mandate. I'm about to speak over your life. Now in the name of Jesus, every spirit that is responsible for barrenness, hear the word of the Lord. The anointing will begin to come on people now. I command that spirit, go now. Out now. Out now. Out now. Every devil of barrenness, I rebuke you. In the name of Jesus, release God's people now. They are in church, the house of God. I command every spirit responsible for barrenness, fibroids, lost blood count, every demonic case, miscarriages, be cursed in the name of Jesus. Now in the name of Jesus, like Eli prophesied to Hannah, we stand here according to the, life, the time of life and we declare, carry your miracle children. Carry your miracle babies. We release twins. We release triplets. In the name of Jesus Christ. That? I don't care what demonic situation is. We call upon the name that is above all names. Listen, it's a master we have toiled all night. Nevertheless, someone say, Nevertheless, even after failed IVFs, nevertheless. The Bible declares this is the confidence that we have in Him. That when we ask anything according to his will fruitfulness is his will because he said be fruitful therefore i stand under this corporate anointing and we declare be fruitful be fruitful be fruitful in the name of jesus please return back to your seats rejoicing
just to be a blessing to you. Hallelujah. And then, tonight is our final night together and it's going to be, it's going to be, we're going to blow up this roof. Hallelujah. Listen, anything you can imagine will happen here tonight. The word will come, prophecies, miracles, and I'll be joined. There are several men and women of God here and it's going to be a corporate anointing. We have several people in our midst. Reverend Sam is here, Oye from Lagos. My dear friend and brother, Pastor Shola is here. Pastor Godwin is here. And I mean, it's just going to be a moment of signs and wonders tonight. We're going to be praying and speaking over the nations. Hallelujah. And I want you to be here early. We're going to start on time so that we'll have that time, we'll just allow the man of God to stretch us in worship and to prepare that ground. And um, please make sure you come with your prayer requests. For those of you who are following online, there's a link for you to send in your requests. We're going to collate all of the requests and we'll call on the God who answers by fire. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, come prepared to pray. Come prepared to praise. Please come. So we have these, um, they're just bringing the bag so that I'll pray. So these are koinonia seekers. In the name of Jesus, we decree and declare. Jesus revealed, Jesus glorified. Yeah. Hallelujah. This is what we believe. We're here to lift Jesus. We decree and declare that these are blessed and we distribute them to bless as many in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Now let me declare restoration. I truly believe in restoration. Many of you have lost things. Many of you have lost people. Many of you have lost opportunities, money, and all kinds of things. But my Bible says, and I will restore. Now in the name of Jesus, from Manchester to the ends of the earth, we declare... May that grace for restoration rest upon you. May that grace for restoration rest upon you. In the name of Jesus. For three days, Saul was looking for his donkey and could not find it. But as soon as they encountered a prophet of God, that donkey returned home. Everything that has left you, but not by the will of God, we command it to return back to you command it to return back to you opportunities relationships finances in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah now for the book of remembrance you've heard me teach that all blessings come from God through men to men it matters who remembers you listen in this kingdom who hates you does not matter but who likes you matters yes sir the Bible says and the king sent for Joseph not God the king and they brought him out of his dungeon we're about to open prophetically the book of remembrance for some of you it will be 10 years in one year you will have strange and mysterious calls from people who had hitherto forgotten you and they will say I've been instructed by God to bless you you watch out for the grace for favor tonight I'll leave that for the night yes. is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake but for now I decree and declare let the book of remembrance 
that archives your service in the house of God that archives the things that you have done for the kingdom may the reward that come with his reward for you in the name of Jesus Christ Hebrews 11 and verse 6 says for he that cometh unto him must believe that he is coming to God must believe that he is and then that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him it pays to serve Jesus you've poured your heart you've poured your finances in the name of Jesus let the book of remembrance be opened again Amen. hallelujah hallelujah praise the name of the Lord the evening meeting starts 5 5 p.m. let 5 be for 5 by the grace of God so that we'll have the time to celebrate Jesus and for those of you who have received your testimonies um, you can meet Minister Kyle Day immediately after we're done and they can document your testimonies those who could not testify yesterday the healing miracles my apologies will allow you to share your testimonies by the evening and then those of you who are connecting from across the globe please make sure you send in your testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ on a final note let me speak over your life as we wrap up the morning service in the name of Jesus return this evening with testimonies for some of you as you depart this auditorium the first thing you collide with is a testimony Amen. in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus and we declare by faith that the evening will be a glorious time in the spirit in Jesus mighty name we pray be blessed and return in peace God bless you hallelujah all right God bless you everyone just very three very important announcements we will all need to please exit this auditorium because it needs to be cleaned before the evening session please you need to all exit this auditorium and please in an orderly manner no pushing no shoving in an orderly manner if you need to get yourself meal there are shops around and different uh, places you can get something to refresh yourself as you exit the auditorium secondly the stickers are going to be given to you upon your entry for the evening session as you're coming in for the evening session, the doors will be opened at 4 o'clock, don't forget. The meeting starts at 5. As you're coming in, you'll be receiving your sticker that has been blessed already. So please prepare to receive your stickers on your way in.